What a great reminder of the goodness of God. And we have another great reminder this morning in our text. Turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 10 as we continue our study in the book of John. If you have uh, chapter headings in your Bible, this one is likely titled The Good Shepherd. You know, comparing uh, a leader and people to shepherd and sheep was a very common practice in the Middle East. Kings and priests would call themselves shepherds and their subjects were sheep. And the Bible makes frequent use of this uh, analogy between God and his people. Uh, Moses and David, who were national leaders, were shepherds over Israel. And of course, you know, the most famous passage employing this shepherd and sheep motif is the 23rd Psalm. That's just a great reminder of the protection and provision of God as a shepherd. Well, here in John 10, uh, John makes two more I am statements. You remember in our study of John, we've said there are seven I am statements. We've already looked at Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. And here in John 10, he says, I am the door and I am the good shepherd. So let's read together in John chapter 10. Let's just read these first 18 verses as Christ is explaining his role as the good shepherd. John chapter 10, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down. I have the authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. And of course, as Jesus talks about the sheep, he's speaking of us here. Now, to be honest, it's cute to think about uh, sheep, but it's not really a flattering term. I mean, here's what we know about sheep. They're dumb. Sheep easily get lost. They don't have any sense of direction. And so they need a shepherd to guide them. They're also helpless. They can't defend themselves. They're easy prey for predators. Well, what's true of sheep is also true about us. We do dumb things. Uh, sometimes we kind of lose our bearings or our direction spiritually, and, and we are spiritually defenseless without a spiritual shepherd. Now, think about if you were with us last week in John 9, Jesus' teaching here in John 10 immediately follows the encounter that the blind man and his parents had with the religious leaders there in chapter 9. Remember, the religious leaders were not only um, unhelpful, but they even cruel to this man and his parents. Well, the religious leaders really cared very little uh, for the common people. And so Jesus is contrasting the, the heartless condition of the religious leaders with his heart and, and his work to lead and protect and provide for God's people or his sheep. Jesus mentions here in John 10 that there is a door or a gate into the sheep pen. The door is the proper way to gain entry, not climbing over the walls, but entering through the door. Those who are of evil intent try to enter some other way, not through the door. Well, 
he's kind of speaking about the religious leaders. The religious leaders had, as thieves, the religious leaders had claimed their, their place among God's people through personal favors, through selfish ambition and political connections and manipulation and, and corruption. And I just want to pause here and say this to you. Um, there are a lot of religious leaders like that today. Uh, you need to be very careful. I know there are a lot of good uh, religious programs on television. You need to be very careful who you listen to and make sure that they are truly uh, good shepherds who are protecting and watching out for the sheep. So Jesus is saying, here's the religious leaders. They have made their way in among God's people through this manipulation, corruption, and political favors, all those kind of things. But a true shepherd uh, enters through the door because a true shepherd is called. He really has a calling to care for the sheep. He loves the sheep. He, he's willing to sacrifice himself in service to the sheep. Now look at the first picture here in, in verses uh, 1 through 5 of John chapter 10. Jesus is giving them a picture they're very familiar with. In the morning, um, the shepherd, uh, many shepherds could live in one town, and the shepherd would come to collect his flock. The town would have kind of a, a common pen, a big sheepfold, where all the flocks um, would be placed. And so the shepherd would come to collect his flock, and, and the gatekeeper who was there stayed overnight to protect the flock, keep out thieves, keep out uh, predators. The gatekeeper would know the shepherd, so he would allow the shepherd to enter that sheepfold. And as the shepherd would come in and, and take his sheep out to pasture, the way he would gather his flock from among all the other flocks in there is he would call his sheep by name. The shepherds would name every sheep in their flock, and they had a personal connection with every sheep. That just reminds us of Jesus as a good shepherd, knowing us personally and calling us by name. So the shepherd would come, and he would call them by name, and when the sheep heard the voice of their shepherd, they would go, and he would lead them out. He didn't get behind them and, and drive them like you might drive cattle or some other kind of herd, but he would lead them out. The sheep knew the voice of their shepherd, and they would follow no one else, no other voice but the voice of their shepherd. And so the shepherd would come and collect his sheep from this, this common pen in town, and then he would lead them out. He would take them to a place where he would find pasture for them. Now, sometimes the shepherd would get far enough out of town or far enough away from town that he would not make it back for the night. So the shepherd would have somewhere out where he was leading his sheep to pasture, he would have built a pen where the sheep would be completely surrounded at night except for the doorway. And so if they were too far from town and night was beginning to fall, he would take his sheep to this pen that he had constructed and lead them in, and then he would lay down across the opening to protect them. And Jesus is, is telling us here that the shepherd becomes the door and as the door, he's there to protect the sheep, and he will even give his very life if it's necessary to protect the sheep. And talking about himself, if you look down at verses 17 and 18, Jesus tells us that he willingly laid down his life. Jesus was not a mortal man who was destined to die. In Hebrews 9, we're told that it's destined once for a man to die. Well, Jesus was not a mortal man who was destined to die. He willingly put himself on the cross to suffer for us, for his sheep. It was a decision he made willingly. His, he says, look, my life was not taken from me. Don't think that Jesus had no choice but to go to the cross because they came and arrested him and they took him and they put him on the cross. His life was not taken from him. He gave it. And because he gave his life, you'll notice in verses 17 and 18, he says he also had the power to take up his life again. We know that Jesus overcame sin and death in the grave because he was resurrected. He had power over sin and death in the grave. Well, let's back up for a minute to verse 10, again, looking at this contrast between the religious leaders and then the true shepherd, the good shepherd. Verse 10, unlike the thief who comes to steal and to kill and destroy, Jesus, the good shepherd, comes to give life abundantly. Now, what, is, what does abundant life mean? Well, abundant is not necessarily, it doesn't guarantee an especially long life. You can have an abundant life without it being a long life. It, it may be long, it may not. Abundant is not a life that is easy and comfortable. Abundant, in, in this text, in this 
passage, abundant is a life of satisfaction, a life of contentment, and it is found only in Jesus. You see, if, if you belong to the good shepherd, your, your contentment is based on the fact that he can handle any emergency. Your contentment is based on the fact that he has every need that you have, he's got it covered. He has everything needed to supply your every need according to his riches and glory. That's what it means to have an abundant life. And, and the picture here in John 10, uh, as we have the good shepherd, as he gives abundant life, as he protects, as he provides, the picture here in John 10 is really more about the shepherd than the sheep. And so I want to finish up this morning, and this short message this morning, I want to finish up by reminding us of the qualities of the good shepherd. And I've gone through and just made a list of seven qualities of a good shepherd. And as I'm sharing this list of seven with you, I want you to listen and maybe pick out two or three of these qualities that you most need to reflect on today. So here are the qualities of a good shepherd. The good shepherd is loving and compassionate. What do we mean by that? Well, he's genuinely interested in your well-being. He's patient and he's kind and forgiving and gracious. Secondly, the good shepherd is protective and sacrificial. He will do whatever is necessary to keep you from harm. You know, there are a lot of things in our world today that can bring spiritual harm to your life, and the Good Shepherd wants to protect you from that, and he's willing to sacrifice himself for you, the sheep. That's an amazing thing to think of, that Jesus was willing to give his own life for us. Thirdly, the Good Shepherd sets boundaries. Now, maybe you've not, never thought about this, but part of being a good shepherd is setting the boundaries. He creates a pen, just like for these sheep, a sheepfold. He creates a pen or, or, or a fold that is a place where you're safe. He tells you where to go and where not to go. Now, that may seem sometimes like, uh, well, why, why would I want someone telling me where to go, not to go? What? Well, he does that for what reason? He does that to protect us. His guidelines protect us. So anytime we choose to get outside of the boundaries he set or ignore his guidelines, we do that to our own peril. We need to trust the good shepherd and the boundaries he has set. Fourthly, the good shepherd is trustworthy. You can follow him and you can obey his voice because you know he is always looking out for your best interests. You know, the problem uh, Adam and Eve had, the problem Eve had in the garden was that Satan convinced her that God was not looking out for her best interest. He was withholding from her. Well, we know from what we know of God, what we know of his word, what we know from personal experience, we know that God is always looking out for our best interest. The good shepherd is trustworthy. Fifth, the good shepherd is hardworking and consistent. He doesn't give up and he works tirelessly to care for us in every circumstance. Jesus is always working for us and for our benefit. Sixth, the good shepherd is a visionary. He sees the future, he knows what's next, he knows God's plans, and he wants what is best for you and best for me. And then finally, number seven, the good shepherd is 100% committed. He'll never abandon you. He's always there for you and always committed to you in all things. You know, I think as we remember the love and sacrifice of the Good Shepherd, that should encourage us to be even more uh, committed to following him even more closely. What a great word. I hope you'll take some time to reread John 10. What a great word in John 10 to remind us of our Good Shepherd and to encourage us to stay under his care and under his protection. Well, I mentioned in the beginning, the 23rd Psalm is one of those passages that follows this motif of the Good Shepherd. So here's what I'd like us to do to close our time together today. You don't need to look it up um, because most of us know this Psalm by heart, but let's just kind of bow and let's pray using the words of the 23rd Psalm about our shepherd. Let's do that together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, Father, we thank you that you are a good shepherd, that you sent Jesus to be our good shepherd. We thank you that we can trust him completely. We thank you that he sets boundaries for us, not to ruin our joy, but to protect us. We ask that you would help us live within the boundaries he has set. Thank you that even in difficult circumstances, we know that the Good Shepherd is watching out for us. Thank you for your provision and your protection through our Good Shepherd. And we ask these things in his name. Amen. Well, I'm glad you joined us today. I want to invite you to connect with us. So I always like to know uh, who's connected with us during these online services. So you can either use the QR code on your screen or you can go to gsfbc.org slash connect. Well, next week we'll be back to a, a normal service. You'll see the, and the online service what's actually happening in house here at Geyer Springs. And of course, that'll be at 930, just like it is every week. Thankful that you joined us. You still have time if you'd like to, to come on out to Raymar Fields and be a part of our service and our picnic there. We'll see you next week.